We would like to thank Podcorn for sponsoring this episode of Tech Time Radio. Explore sponsorship opportunities and start monetizing your podcast by signing up at podcorn.com forward slash podcasters. Let me tell you about Podcorn. Podcorn is an absolute must for any podcaster starting out. Now, when we started out Tech Time Radio, we started out in a back office with a couple of mics. We expanded to a studio, and then now, as you can see, we're on the radio and have distribution into other markets. Having the ability to have Podcorn at the start of our podcast would have been a dream come true. Guess what? With Podcorn, you now have the amazing opportunity for podcasts to receive sponsorship, such as host reads, interview segments, and topical discussions. With Podcorn, there's no middleman. Podcasters of all size can browse and choose opportunities right on their platform, set their own rates, and collaborate with brands directly without exclusivities. You never give up the rights of your podcast in Podcorn, and they're here to support you everywhere possible. Visit podcorn.com. Again, that's podcorn.com. Podcorn is a true success for those starting their podcast dreams. Broadcasting across the nation from the East Coast to the West, keeping you up to date on technology while enjoying a little whiskey on the side. With leading edge topics, along with special guests, to navigate technology in a segmented, stylized radio program. The information that will make you go, hmm. Pull up a seat, raise a glass with our hosts as we spend the next hour talking about technology for the common person. Welcome to Tech Time Radio with Nathan Mum. Welcome to Tech Time with Nathan Mum, the show that makes you go, hmm, technology news of the week. The show for the everyday person talking about technology, broadcasting across the nation with insightful segments on subjects weeks ahead of the mainstream media. We welcome our radio audience of 35 million listeners to an hour of insightful technology with a little whiskey on the side. I'm Nathan Mum. Welcome to our show today. We live stream during our show on five of the most popular platforms, including YouTube, Twitch.tv, Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. We encourage you to watch us live or visit us on TechTimeRadio.com or even tweet us during the show at hashtag TechTimeRadio, and we'll do our best to respond to your questions or comments on the air. I'm your host, a technologist with over 30 years expertise in technology. My co-host, Mike Day is an award-winning author originally from Arizona. Mike is a human behavior expert living in the Seattle area with a master's degree in forensic psychology. Mike keeps me from geeking out while providing insight into human behavior and how it interacts with technology. We're two friends from different backgrounds but bring the best technology show possible every week for our family, friends, and fans to enjoy. Welcome, everybody. Hopefully, everybody had a great holiday weekend. Oh, boy, today is a special day. We got uh, National Pecan Day. Pecan. Pecan Day. Oh, okay. uh, And it's uh, Amazon you Prime ask- Day. You were asking that question last night. I was. Is you it know what? pecan or pecan? It is a tomato, oh, tomato, man. right? Oh, okay, right. so we got... Prime Day going on, so we're going to be talking about that. This is your favorite holiday. Oh, on the Nathan Nugget, you're going to want to stay tuned to hear about Nathan's insights into Prime Day. (laughs) What what day? Welcome to Prime Day, but you know what? We're having so much fun. We're going to have it for two days and not call it Prime Days, but just Prime Day. Yes, some great marketing there. All right, we're going to actually talk about how it started. I don't think they care. Well, I I, I will, because that will be the basis for uh, what I talk about after that. Okay. Ramp up. Okay. Whew. One one thousand, two one thousand. All right. All right. What are we talking about today? Oh, let's start today's show. Now on today's show. All right. Microtransactions for your car. This really. This is one I would rant on. Oh my word! We're going to talk about this. What in the heck is going on here? We're going to be talking about that in our stories. (laughs) Uh, the James Webb Telescope shows some amazing pictures released from NASA. And how does Nathan feel about Amazon Prime Day? I think mm-hmm. we might already have a hint. Well, there you go. Next, we have an interview with the CTO of Vidovation. Uh, Jim Jakata is going to be explaining his technology around bonded cellular and a look back at Skylab's re-entry. In addition, we have our standards features, which is This Week in Technology. Mike's mesmerizing moment, and of course, our pick of the day, whiskey tasting. Jaquetta. Jaquetta. <laughs> Sorry. So sit back, <laughs> raise a glass, and welcome to Tech Time with Nathan Mum. Now it's time to start our show with our loaded 
Question of the Week brought to you by Elderberry Boost. Get your Elderberry Boost today at elderberry-boost.com. Mike and Odie, here's your loaded question. If you could have dinner with anyone past or present, who would it be and why? I'm going to have to go with... uh... Oh, man. I just blew, I just, it just blew out of my head. Just blew out of your head? Uh, yeah, Bill Nye, the science guy. Bill Nye, okay, he's still alive. Yeah, I like that guy. You so, took mine. Uh, oh, sorry. Oh, Odie, well, he's a local guy here in the Pacific Northwest. Well, I can also go out uh, with Neil deGrasse Tyson. I really enjoy that guy, too. Okay, all right. Odie, it's, it's to you now. Mm, I'd love to talk with Walt Disney. Oh. Yeah. Oh, you took my guy. Way to go. Way to go. So Mike takes yours. You take mine, because that's who I was going to say, because you know I'm a big Walt Disney fan. All right, why would you want to talk with Walt Disney? I'd love to, because, like, (laughs) I'd love to see, like, show him the parks and everything. Show him the parks now? Yeah, and talk about it. He'd probably be not very happy. Well, probably not. And then, like, the whole Star Wars buy, and then, like, Pixar, all that, all that jazz. Yeah, okay. Okay, you want to see. You know, some people believe Walt Disney's still alive. Like his head was frozen in some carbon something, yes, something, something. I know. Something. That, and that, that, that's still going around. <laughs> that's still going around on the internet. Yep. So. Um, Biogenics, baby. Uh, so my person now, wow. That was actually Walt Disney is who I was going to say. You know what? I'd, yeah, I'd like up. to. Just, just George Washington. George Washington. What? Yeah, one of our presidents. One of our first founding presidents. Basic. I wonder what it would be like back in the time when they were the presidents of the United States. But they have to deal with the same scrutiny. Of course they didn't. If, if you're reading notes on a note card or if you say something wrong and you have a gazillion people blow up something and share it, they didn't have to deal with that. So No, I, they, used, very... they used other forms of media back then. They did. They yeah. did. So uh, that would be mine. Okay. Well, Same stuff, though. You know, historical people are kind of interesting to ask them what would happen. Yours is still alive, though. Bill yeah, Nye, the science guy. Bill Nye is still alive. All right, Mike, as always, we have our whiskey tastings during the commercials to see if we like our selected pick of the day. <laughs> it if it better gets, be better this week. <laughs> it better be better than last yeah. week, right? So to either get zero, one, or two thumbs up at the end of the show, we want to make sure you listen all the way through to pick up a few interesting facts on Mark's mumbles that will make you go, mmm, yeah, with the whiskey about last facts week, I want to cough. of the week. What's that? Just thinking about last week, I want to cough. You want to cough? Don't cough. Don't cough. All right, now it's time for the latest headlines in the world of technology. What's happening in the world of technology? This is our top stories in the first five minutes. Okay. All right. Story number one, Twitter shares uh, fall as Elon Musk backs out of deal. All right. So here's what we got. You knew that was going to happen. That is right. We talked about this already. Shares in Twitter continue to fall after Elon Musk announced he is pulling out of the $44 billion deal to buy the social media platform. Mr. Musk backed out after claiming Twitter failed to provide enough information on the number of spam and fake accounts on the site. Yep. Yeah, really? Uh, Twitter plans to take legal action to make the deal go ahead as he's hired uh, top U.S. law firms to defend himself, and Twitter has done the same also. I I think that's a little funny. Hey, I'm going to buy this from you. Uh, Never mind. I'm not going to buy this for you. Oh, well, you're going to sue me to get me to buy that for you. (laughs) And then you're going to buy it? Well, okay. so this is interesting. Uh, Musk tweeted using Twitter that said that they needed to disclose bot info in court. So he wants Mm -hmm. the bot info to come out in court. Is this going to be like a Johnny Depp court type of deal where they go back and forth for six weeks? I doubt this is going to be about this. Okay. The multi-billionaire then tweeted a picture showing an American actor and martial artist Chuck Norris at a chessboard. With the follow-up post saying, Chuck me. <laughs> All right. Twitter's share prices, uh, yeah, though, exactly. stood at about $32.64 as of Monday. Trading closed. Uh, following further below the $0.54.20 cents a share takeover price agreed by Mr. Musk and the Twitter board in April. Mm-hmm. So uh, do you think he's just trying to renegotiate the pricing? You know, I, d- I don't know. This he. He's a very interesting fellow, and I'm sure he has a strategy that he's deploying, whether you believe he's trying to destroy Twitter or take it over or whatever. Whatever. Yep. All right. Well, there you go. Mr. Musk is back in the news, I'm sure. This is not the last time he'll lead off one of our tech time No, we will totally be talking about him probably next week. That's right. All right. Story number two. I think it's in your wheelhouse here, Mike. Yes. The James Webb Space Telescope, which launched at Christmas last year, has completed its long journey 
a million miles from Earth where it will orbit the sun, and it has started sending back pictures. These pictures are unbelievable. They are unbelievable. Full-colored images that are more detailed than those of its nearest cousin, the Hubble Telescope, okay. which has been orbiting the Earth now for 32 years. That's These, how long it's been, 32 years, the Hubble? It's been 32 years for the Hubble. Wow. Yes. That's how old I am, because I remember that was the big thing when I was growing up. So, okay. There you go. So these stunning images that were released by Nat- NASA and its partner agencies include a cluster of galaxies as it appeared 4.6 billion years ago. Okay. A giant gla- uh, giant gas exoplanet, which is about 1,150 light years away from us. Uh, the Southern Ring Nebula at 2,500 light years away. The Carina Nebula at 7,600 light years, and the Stevens Quintet, a cluster of galaxies about 290 million light years away. All these images included stere- uh, spectrographic data and are giving us a an even deeper look into the cosmos around us. If you want to look at these, you can, of course, look around on the web, or you can go to www.nasa.org and take a look at them. I swear I saw Vulcan in one of those pictures. Yeah, you, yeah. And there's that little spiral one in the very back. Oh, that's got to be Vulcan. Uh, okay. It looks just like the you talking about Gene Roddenberry. Quintet, or are you talking about the, <laughs> the picture of the the first picture they released? The yesterday. first picture they released. Yeah, you, yeah, you know. I, I think that's, that's got to be Vulcan. It looks just like it in the uh, fantasize in the Star Trek shows, so I think that's where it's at. Okay, but so, you know the the picture that they released yesterday. You're largely looking at galaxies that are not in our galaxy. So maybe like Star Wars, uh, there there are galaxies <laughs> far far away there. Okay, there you go. The Stevens Quintet is in the Pegasus, uh, uh, galaxy star group. Okay. If you're interested in looking at that, and they these are ones that are colliding with each other, so it's really cool. And one of them is like colliding, and there's like a gas pocket that's really musky and dirty, and that so. yeah, that's the Carina Nebula. Okay, all right, perfect. All right, well, thank you, Mr. NASA expert there, Mr. Gordain. That's story NASA number three. This remote key fob hack may leave the past decade of Honda vehicles vulnerable. Despite the automaker's attempt for security, heads up Honda owners, security researchers found a vulnerability in the new Hondas that can allow someone to unlock and start the car without keys. It's been dubbed the Rolling Pawn, P-W-N. The Rolling Pawn. Yeah, really, Pawn, Pawn, however you want to do it. I've been Pawned, I've been Pawned. Pawned. Okay. Uh, Pecan. This attack, (laughs) Pecan, uh, works by eavesdropping on a pair of key fobs and capturing several codes sent by the fob. The attacker can then later replay the sequence of the valid codes. So kind of like it records it. It records mm-hmm. the transmissions going back, and then it can resync it at a later time. This allows the attacker to use older codes that would normally be invalid even months after the codes have been captured. In fact, when security researchers responsible for the latest vulnerability reached out to Honda to disclose the bug... Honda said that instead they told them to call customer <laughs> service rather than submitting a rebug to report it through the official challenge. That's awesome. So they it got hacked. The hackers talked about it. Then these other security experts went to verify that the hack is correct, and they mm-hmm. did. So then those security experts reached out to Honda, and Honda's response is, oops, there's probably nothing we can do about it, so we're just not going to respond to you or thank you. We're just well, going to send you to customer service. Maybe they call the customer service of the hackers that hacked them. <laughs> they, you know, they got they, really good They do. Have, the hacker service are the best. All right, story number four, microtransactions in your car. Be, this this, this yeah, just this, chaps me, man. This is just, yeah, this is oh. just, this is just, they should put plus on that. This should be, <laughs> so it should be transaction plus? It should be, yeah. Or, or, BM, or BMW, BMW plus. plus or whatever. <laughs> okay. BMW starts selling heated seat subscriptions for $18 a month. So essentially, if I buy myself a BMW, uh, we're going to go through a couple yeah, of these other things. You, you don't get heated seats you unless don't get you hit, pay for it. Unless you pay for it. On a monthly basis. On a monthly basis. So it's built into the car itself. Right. So it has the capabilities of this, but I have to pay for the service. So here's what we got. So a monthly subscription has been... Uh, greenlit to heat your BMW's front seat, which costs roughly $18 a month, with the option to subscribe for a year at 180 three years at 300 or you can pay the unlimited access. After you bought your vehicle, you can pay an additional $415 to unlock heated seats for the passenger. This is only the passenger. This is only for the passenger. This is only for the passenger at the time. 
All right, now. You know, you probably already pay for that when you are going through the car buying process. Yes, of course you paid for it. It already had to be built in there, right? Well, I so, know, so but you're, you're probably already paying that fee. So, Well, BMW has solely put features behind subscriptions since 2020. The heated seat subs are now available at the BMW digital stores. But wait, other features that BMW is going to be unlocking upcoming included a heated <laughs> steering wheel for $12 a month, the option to record footage from your car's camera, which you already paid for, priced at 230 Five dollars for unlimited use, and the Iconic Sound Sports Package. So, if I want to have my car engine sound, sound cool. room, room, room in the car itself, I can pay the one-time fee of one hundred and seventeen dollars. That's awesome. At the rate they're going, you're going to have to pay a subscription service just to turn it on every month. But what is that? What when it, when have we moved into a society where it's okay if I buy something that already has these features built into it? Yeah, thank you. you're going to charge me a subscription. Thank you, fee. Netflix. Wow. So, first of all, if I guess if you can afford a BMW, I guess you can afford these subscription costs, probably. I, but still, the I, don't, point, I don't know. The, to me, that seems that seems like a, a kind of a... Just think of Ford coming out next. You got a I, truck, I, and you can't I feel use like, I feel like the pole, pole t- solution. You can't use your right. backlight. Every time I think of it, my finger wants to come up. I just, I was just, when I read that story, I was just, that just made me so excited to talk about Prime Day. Yeah, all I right. Bet. Well, Mike, our time is up. We got through the top stories of the week. If you want to learn more about this, please visit us online at techtimeradio.com or click on our episode section or blog to get more details on these stories and features. Now it's time to get ready for our whiskey tasting during the break. But up next, we have our segment per uh, Ask the Expert talking about a bunch of different items. Clear security expert that we're going to have on that is going to be talking about how he uses dual banded uh, 5G technology to stream different information. So we're excited for that. We're going to take a commercial break. When we come on back, you'll be in line for Jim joining us from Vidovation on our show. We'll see you after the break. Hey, Mike. Yeah, what's up? Are you interested in traveling now again? Of course, isn't everybody? Yes, I think they are. And I got a deal for you. Tell me. Affordable World is excited to introduce a brand new tour. Oh, is that the new Inspiring Istanbul and Malta tour? That's correct. All right. They will have you exploring the timeless mystique of Istanbul, where you'll lose yourself in this multicultural texture and lively atmosphere. Then discover the tiny island paradise of Malta, a hidden gem where you can escape to see spectacular beaches, rolling fields, and endless vineyards. You can save $100 per person with the code that we're going to give you right here at Tech Time Radio called Hidden Gem. Again, just like Malta, if you type in the code Hidden Gem at checkout, you can save $100 per person. Airfare and accommodation are included. Visit affordableworld.com to book today. You visit the two incredible destinations on one single trip. The discount code Hidden Gem can be entered at checkout. It cannot be combined with any other offers, and the promotion runs July 1st through September 30th. Make sure to sign up now. Again, visit affordableworld.com. That's affordableworld.com to start your vacation adventure. Welcome back to Tech Time with Nathan Mom. Tech Time Radio is a weekly hour technology show that talks about current technology in a simple format without having to geek out. Brought to you by myself, Nathan Mum, and Mike Day. We just had our first whiskey tasting during the break. And now let me tell you all about what we're sipping today for our pick of the day. It's the Jack Daniels Single Barrel Proof, 134.4 proof, $69.95 a bottle. It's a whiskey that has a natural tendency to be Poured straight from the barrel at full proof. It's a tense, smooth, and remarkable varied barrel proof is bottled at anywhere between 125 to 140 proof. Taking Jack's trademark vanilla and toasted oat flavor to a bold new level. It's an intense nose of maple, bananas, and burnt wood flavor of caramel, tobacco, vanilla, and toasted oak. Smooth finish. With lots of heat. Mm-hmm. Mr. Gorday, now last week we had a little bit of we, a... We don't uh, need to talk about last week. We, we had a little episode with our, our whiskey. You just didn't even make it through the show with that. That was uh, a, an no, interesting No, I have taste, never right? experienced a whiskey that clamped my throat shut and made it so I could barely breathe. Uh, it, was, it, was, it wasn't it was was quite as bad. Now, how was your first taste of oh, this, this week's... This one's much better. Now, you're kind of a Jack Daniels fan, aren't you? Uh, no, Jack. Or I'm Jim a, Bean. I'm Are you Jim, Jim Bean? Yeah, Jim Beam is kind of my go-to. Okay. Okay. All right. We're going to have this. Now, this is a mash bill, which means it's 80% corn, 12% malted barley, and 8% rye. 
Uh, it is distilled by Jack Daniel Distillery in Lynchburg, Tennessee. So there you go. We got a little there bit more go. for that. We got some Mark mumbles on this. So I'll tell you, Mark was indifferent on this. Didn't quite like it at first, but then he's now kind of starting to fall in love with this uh, whiskey. That's what that's what's the, kind of the segment we have coming up here for the Mark Mumble. Why why are you mumbling about Mark's mumbles before he needs to mumble? Well, there's a bunch of information in there because he had such a bad whiskey last week that that yeah that he got yeah. tore up on the show, which at, was funny because <laughs> what's that? Because he did it on. He did it on purpose. He to did get it to, you back. He, he did it to he get was me trying back. Trying to get you back, and he ended up and then he ended up having you me. shut down for the show. <laughs> That's right. Okay. At the end of the show, we're going to give our thumbs up or thumbs down based on this. Odie has a, a little bit of this sipping also, so she did not like last week. Last week was pretty much a, a no go forever, and we'll see if this one has a little bit more into our thumbs up liking. Well, now that we got our whiskey out of the way, we're going to move to our main story of the day. Our main story is talking about how a company has come up with a way to use streaming technology at the consumer level to provide world-class streaming live video while on a trip, through tunnels, in the mountains, or anywhere that you'd have a seclusion that you wouldn't be able to necessarily get uh, your internet traffic. The company, Vidovation, excels in helping clients like you integrate custom video transmission streaming and contribution to distributed systems in an existing infrastructure with the ability to satisfy almost all appliances, applications, or budget. Mike is joining us. He is the executive, or Mike, this Jim. is exciting. Jim is as joining Jim us. As Jim is joining us, he is the executive vice president and CTO. So, Jim Jakata, thank you very much for joining the show today. This is a segment we call Ask the Experts. All right, as Jim comes on up. Jim, last time we talked, we kind of geeked out on a few items, but today I want to talk about your technology solutions, streamlining, and hard-to-reach places. Uh, People are always streaming for work, for pleasure, especially across the globe. Now with our remote work environment that we have, you need to have streaming services everywhere. If you're out in the middle of a mountain hike, you never know when you may have that Zoom call. Yeah, you I got need to, to pull I need, on over. I need and, to pull off the trail and do a Zoom call. That's right. Okay. But what's really interesting is that Jim has some solutions that are out of the box, uh, consumer, pro-consumer grade, and even to the high end of major motion industrial. So, Jim, welcome to the show. Hey, guys. How you doing? Glad to be here. Good, good, good. Hi, Jim. Uh, Jim. All right. So please explain to me first some of the clients that you interact with your business. So let's kind of give a rundown. Yeah. Who are your clients? Yeah, our, our clients tend to be uh, television stations, sports leagues. Uh, we're working with the PGA. Uh, so we're, we, we need to transmit live from golf courses in rural areas. We might do a bicycle race. Out that goes out into the middle of a desert. Uh, we're doing quite a few, believe it or not, fishing tournaments. Okay. Uh, some of these fishing tournaments end up on ESPN Live, so uh, it's kind of hard to broadcast live from the middle of a lake uh, uh, where there's no uh, a satellite is just not an option. Yeah, I can vouch for that. Yeah, <laughs> you can vouch for that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I can tell you the one thing about fishing is that when I go fishing, I catch nothing. So forget internet. I, I can't even catch the fish in the boat. So. That's well, you're, you're going <laughs> for the wrong reason. Uh, that's right. Okay. All right. So, so Jim, it's all about the drinking, right? That's right. Well, that's you know, right. if you have a nice whiskey out on the boat, then everything you're, you're goes just, easier. You're, you're catching you. something. It's just not a fish. <laughs> that's right. Okay, Jim. So, explain what is your core business? Okay, your core business. What do you do? You're kind of an AV company, but for the standard everyday listener that's listening to our show, what's kind of your core business that you specialize in? Well, I mean, it, our technology may touch the consumer, but we're really working more with the cor- a corporation or the enterprise or from a consumer level, maybe an executive wants to do a, a webinar from home or have a, a town hall meeting, but wants a broadcast quality camera instead of a web camera then our technology would, would, would come into place. And fundamentally what we do is the, the, the magic uh, sauce or the, 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 the magic bullet is we use cellular technology and we don't just use one cellular connection, we'll use as many as eight cellular connections. And those eight connections, uh, some of them might be on Verizon, some might be on AT&T, some on T-Mobile or a mixture of all three depending upon where you are. 
So having those, that's where the term, we, we use the term bonded cellular. It's actually an IT term, you know, bonding several connections together. And, you know, uh, probably in the past, you would bond several T1 connections together to make a DS3 connection, a bigger pipe. So we bond or take smaller cellular pipes and bond them into one big pipe so we can stream video uh, reliably from these remote locations. Okay. Um, so explain that. Let's, let's talk about that. So bonded cellular. So you're, are you saying that you take a carrier with like a 5G a SIM card and you put it on top of another SIM card? Ex explain to me what your kind of bonded cellular or the AVI West IP is what you kind of call it, I think, is a is that yeah, area? Explain our, that. That's one of our partners. Okay. IP West. Okay, explain yeah, that to so, us. So, yeah, so I, I don't know, your audience is pretty technical. So we take a, an encoder and we encode the video, relatively uh, traditional methodology of encoding video. There's a lot of uh, 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 encoders, inexpensive, high-end encoders. But the real magic is taking that stream of packets. We encode it into a bunch of IP packets. Then you send those packets across the internet, or in this case, across the cellular network. The packets get all out of order. They get, some arrive early, some arrive late. Then we take those packets and we spread them across the eight connections, the eight cellular connections. So some packets go on modem number one, some go on two, some three, four, five, six, seven. And the real magic happens on the receiving side to take those eight streams put them back together. And for video, the packets need to be in order. I mean, even this, uh, our, our, our web session today, you know, if the packets were out of sequence, you wouldn't be able to see or hear me right now. So that's the real magic, breaking everything apart, sending it over these eight connections, and then putting it all back together on the receiving side. That's really magic. And, you know, we use forward error correction, automatic re-requests, uh, there's a lot of uh, everything is dynamic and automatic. You know, the bit rate will go up and down based on the quality of your connection. If we have a 10 megabit connection, we'll use it. If that suddenly drops, we adapt to it. So this, the technology is very adaptable to Internet and cellular and network conditions. OK, so so if I'm out in the middle of a boat, you talked about the fishing tournament, right? And right. so as I move forward further and further away from a cellular tower, probably the signal strength is going to be less and less and less. So does that mean the video quality is a little less uh, high definition? Is it kind of put those little filters in where you kind of start seeing the bit maps of everything that's going on? What, what happens when you're further away with that technology that's there? Well, in television, uh, I think we all learned this from satellite, you know, when you remember when CNN got a very low bit rate video feed from the rooftop in Baghdad, the first uh, Gulf War? Um, that kind of proved that even a low resolution video is better than no video. Okay. Uh, some of our competitors take the approach where they do constant bit rate. They'll, they'll run at a high bit rate, but then it drops out. Then it freezes. We will scale the image. We will shrink the image and then scale it back up. Yes, you might lose some fidelity, but uh, a little bit loss of fidelity or, or a little bit of the resolution, uh, as we call it, the picture gets a little bit soft. Uh, a little bit softness in the picture is better than no picture. And of course, we give priority to the audio. You know, the human eye is more forgiving uh, to a loss in visual fidelity or video fidelity than audio. Any kind of clicks or pops, uh, the human ear doesn't forgive that. So it's a delicate dance, and it's all automatic. But but you're, you're right, Nathan, that uh, if the, the fishing, the bass fishing boat goes to a corner of the lake where there's not as much cellular connectivity, the unit may actually switch cellular carrier automatically. So, you know, it was in the middle of the lake, maybe the modems were grabbing Verizon, then it moves to a corner of the lake. Now it's out of a range of Verizon. Our system will automatically grab T-Mobile or AT&T and it will do everything it can to grab a signal. Now, there are areas where there is no signal, so we're not magicians. We can't fabricate a cellular signal where there isn't one. Uh, but there's techniques for that, too, where we'll record the video while we're in that kind of dead spot of, of the lake. 
and then play it back when the when the boat comes back into range. So there are workflow ways around of of, of maybe the video will be a little bit delayed, but we'll still get the video out. Uh, uh, We'll call that near live, where the video is delayed a few minutes and then we still get it out. So TiVo. there, there's always a way to kind of get is that on TiVo. Is that what you said? Yeah, TiVo, TiVo, yeah. TiVo. That's like kind of like they they buffer that a little bit. Yep. So it's my under it's my understanding that the the system is trying to keep the continuity of the video rather than the overall quality of the video. Is that is that what I'm hearing? Yes. Yes. A continuity. Reliability, continuity—that's the most important thing. Uh, the technology started in news, and many of our competitors. Uh, news is a lot easier. News—it's a—it's usually a single camera operator on a courthouse steps. They're not moving around. Uh, we invented a new category called live reality TV. We've done live PD, first responders live. Uh, police cars, emergency vehicles uh, going at a, you know, 120 miles an hour and maintaining that cellular connection. But the real uh, uh, special thing that we do is we're able to do multiple cameras. So s keeping one camera on the action and synced with the facility is is re is easier. Now I have uh, the PGA will use uh, 15, 20 cameras all having different angles of the same shot. And if they're out of sync or what we call gen lock, uh, if they're out of sync with each other, you can't produce a live show. So we're really good at having untethered units, units mounted on the camera. The cameras are not wired together. There's no cheating. There's no strings, uh, except there's no cables. <laughs> we're fully untethered. Uh, and we're the only vendor that can really do that and really do it well. All right, so talk about what the gen lock and lip sync is. So so that's something that's really important with your three cameras. Is that something proprietary that you guys do? Because I have seen other broadcasts where they'll have to resync the video, right? Sometimes we do right. video here where we have two or three cameras. When we did Tech Time Radio, we first started. Remember that? Oh, yeah. And then and what happened is, is one camera, the syncing wouldn't be quite the same with the audio. And so if you went from one camera to another, now – my conversation, I'd either have to slow it down or I'd have to go into post-production uh, Adobe Premiere and I'd have to do this synchronized uh, deal to kind of make it very difficult to do. What, explain what your guys' system and how you do that Genlock part. Well, you, you, you got the gist of it there, Nathan. You know, when, when you know, you guys are doing a live show, but then you rebroadcast it so you can fix certain anomalies in post-production. Uh, the PGA, all the, you know, 30 microphones are open simultaneously on, on a given green or on a given tee box. Dozens of cameras. There's a wide shot. There's a tight shot. Tight shot on, on Tiger. Uh, tight shot on Phil Mickelson. Well, well not Phil anymore. No, he's, a, he's in the live, uh, <laughs> live group now, but that's all right. Yeah, I get you. I get you. Yeah, you get what I mean. Right? Yep. Uh, uh, so, so, uh, um, uh, uh if the microphones were out of sync with the video or out of sync with each other, you'd hear like four, four, you know, whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Uh, and the, the mics would all bleed into each other. It would be, you certainly can't fix it live. Maybe you could try to fix it in post-production, but this is live action. So everything needs to be in sync. Now, the traditional way of keeping uh, cameras on a tripod or a camera on sticks, you know, doing the Super Bowl, um, the cameras are tethered with a cable back to the truck, sending a reference signal to keep them in sync. Uh, our technology is able to, all of our cellular units have a GPS receiver. So they, they either have a GPS reference clock or a uh, cellular reference clock. And the cellular reference clock, you know, time of day, you know, down to tenths of seconds, time of day, either from the GPS or the cellular network, and the cellular network is probably getting its time reference uh, from a, a time server or even GPS as well. Most master controls have a GPS timing reference. So the camera in the studio are, are within, you know, one hundredth of a second. It's close, but we're still, you know, dozens of frames off. We got to get down to the frame rate, you know, down to the down to, you know, 15 or 30 milliseconds. 
and and timing signals. It all comes down to time stamping every packet. So we know, you know, and the, and the packets are numbered. They're in order. So uh, time stamping. And then we send reference signals from the studio to the field. It's similar to uh, when you're on a wired network, uh, we call it precision timing protocol. Uh, you, your, your network switches manage the clock. One switch or one device in the studio will be like the grand master clock. Okay. Then there'll be slave clocks, but that's on a managed network. Cellular and the public internet is unmanaged. So we can't, we don't have control of the switches on the internet. But we use a similar kind of similar technique, and my vendor would have to kill me if they told me the the, the exact details. It's patented, but mm. uh, that's the magic, and we can get you know uh, within a frame of accuracy or better. Uh, 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 that if there is any any differences, it's not noticeable, and, and you can't hear it. So that's the amazing thing: keeping everything in sync. And you know, the technical term for the video synchronization we call that Genlock. And then the technical term for the audio sync, we call that lip sync. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right, Jim. So you are quite the expert. So um, you have training and video solutions directly on your website. How do I go out and find out more information or if I'm interested in in having this type of system for a remote event that I'm going to be doing, maybe a a remote wedding, I guess you could do this for high net worth individuals. Maybe they'd want to have this stream to many different people. A remote side of the... Kindergarten. Uh, there you go. <laughs> Maybe well, not church, right there. Churches, but... the, churches is a common common application. Churches are common. Or, that makes sense. The religious places. Events, yep. uh, yeah. Our our website is vidovation. V i d o v a t i o n dot com. Uh, my name is kind of unique, and 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 Mike, thank you for pronouncing it correctly. Oh, you're welcome, uh, Jim Jaquetta. <laughs> Jaquetta, uh, I got you. Jim Jaquetta, I get you. Okay, yeah, there we go. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Oh, I'm you. I'm you. I've been called Geppetto. Oh, you know, uh, Geppetto. Geppetto. Okay, okay. Yeah, well, <laughs> so Jim, J A C H E T T A. You can find my name on social media. You can email me, Jim at vidovation.com, or you can give us a call at 949 777 5435. Perfect. All right, Jim, thank you so much. It was a pleasure having you on the show. Hopefully we can uh, maybe look forward to talking to you in the future about one of your events that you have uh, and how you've gotten some new technology working out there. Maybe I could even see you out on that bass fishing trip. That sounds like so much fun, doesn't it? Yes. Yes. Yes, we'll, we'll sure. get the whiskey guys as a sponsor. There, there we you go. go. Perfect, perfect, Thanks, perfect. Thanks, thank you, guys. Jim. I, thank you for having me. It was a pleasure. All right, thank you. You too. Very much. Bye-bye. All right, that ends our segment, Ask the Expert. Up next, we have This Week in Technology. So now is a great time to enjoy a little whiskey on the side. I will talk to you after this break. I'm Nathan Mum with Tech Time Radio. See you in a few minutes. Hey, Mike. What? Have you heard of Elderberry? Only in reference to a Monty Python movie. Well, let me tell you, Elderberry Boost. Again, that's elderberry-boost.com. Elderberry Boost. Yes, Mike, that's Elderberry Boost. You can choose Organic Elderberry Boost, that eight-ounce size. It's available on sale right now at eleven ninety nine. But you're listening here right now on Tech Time Radio, so you need to go to Elderberry, that's E-L-D-E-R-B-E-R-R-Y-Boost.com and get some today. Elderberry Boost. Elderberry is an all-natural organic immune system booster and antiviral. Elderberry is known to actively fight against viruses, including colds and the flu. It also works as a natural remedy for allergies, cancer, digestion, heart disease, high cholesterol, headache, toothache, weight loss, and reduced inflammation. It's a natural and healthy diuretic and has many antiviral properties. While it is famous for fighting the flu, it is effective for any illness. Elderberry Boost was created to provide a quality organic elderberry to their customers after searching years ago for a perfect elderberry syrup. None could be found, so they essentially created their own homemade recipe. If you would like to get 15% off your first order of Elderberry Boost, just put in the discount code TECHTIME at checkout. Again, that's elderberry-boost.com. Elderberry Boost. Hello, my name is Arthur, and my life's work is connecting people with coffee. Story Coffee is a small batch specialty coffee company that uses technology to connect people to each product resource, which allows farmers to unlock their economic freedom. Try our medium roast founder series coffee, which is an exotic bourbon variety that is smooth, fresh, and elegant at storycoffee.com. 
That's s t o r i coffee dot com. Today you can get your first bag free when you subscribe at storycoffee dot com with code TechTime. That's s t o r i coffee dot com. And now, let's look back at this week in technology. July eleventh, nineteen seventy nine, Skylab reentry. The first American space station, Skylab. Re-enters the Earth's atmosphere and burns up after plans to keep it in orbit fail to materialize. Fragments of Skylab fall around Perth, Australia, killing one cow. Oh man! Skylab was the, o- the beef. I know. <laughs> it's the only space station operated exclusively by the United States. A permanent station was planned to start in 1988, but funding was canceled and replaced with the United States' participation in the International Space Station in 1993. Three cruised missions designed Skylab 2, 3, and 4 all made it to Skylab in the Apollo Command and Service modules. Major operations including an orbital workshop, a solar observatory, Earth observation, and hundreds of experiments. A first-hand experience was documented by John Seller managing the remote sheep and cattle station east of Perth. They saw the final moments of Skylab with his wife Elizabeth. And it was quoted, it was coming straight for us. It was an incredible sight. Hundreds of shining lights dropping all around the homestead. They were white as they headed for us, but the pieces turned to a dull red as they began dropping. The horses on the property ran mad. They galloped all over the place and the dogs were barking. We couldn't calm them down. Then we could hear the noise and the wind in the air as more significant pieces passed over us all the time. Then finally, with a tremendous sonic boom, it must have lasted about a minute. The whole house shook three times just after the last piece dropped out of sight. Afterwards, there was a burning smell like burnt earth. The San Francisco Examiner offered a $10,000 prize for the first piece of Skylab to be delivered to their office. 17-year-old Stanton Thornton watched the scene from the roof of his home in Western Australia and had a bunch of bright colored lights followed by the big sonic booms. His mother had heard them hit the roof of their shed in the backyard, so he climbed up and found the sizzling hot pieces metal that was lying there. Within a day, he was bound for San Francisco, where he collected his prize. That sounds exciting. Doesn't that sound like a sci-fi movie? That's got to be Steven I, Spielberg know, in I the remember, background, right? I remember when I was young, a standing out looking for something and I'm wondering if it wasn't this Skylab. In the in the sky maybe your parents took you out and you were like yeah. looking into the Yeah. It, but I don't know. There was a lot of there was a Haley's lot of Haley's Comet. Space. I remember doing that with my parents when the mm-hmm. Haley's Comet went by. Yeah, but that was in eighty something. That yeah. Was, yeah. But I, there was so much going on back then that it might have been Skylab falling out of the sky or it might have been one of the, you know, missions to throw it up there. Who knows? Okay. All right. That was This Week in Technology. If you ever wanted to watch some Tech Time history with over two years of videos, podcasts, and blog information, you can visit techtimeradio.com or watch our older shows or join the Tech Timers Facebook group to talk with us live all the time. We're going to take a commercial break. When we return, we have a Nathan Nugget of the Week. Just around the corner, we have Mark's Mumbles, and we will see you after this break. An accident claimed her daughter's lives. Her husband's life hangs in the balance. And Rue feels like she's losing her mind. A brand new psychological thriller from author Eve S. Evans. Available for pre-order today. As Rue tries to figure out how to be alone in the family home, strange noises, voices, and shadows reveal themselves to her. Questions bubble to the surface. Are Rue's daughters haunting her? Why can't she remember what happened when they went off the bridge into the icy water below? Beneath the Water by Eve S. Evans. Available on Amazon June 29th. Welcome back to Tech Time with Nathan Mum. I'm your host, technology expert. In addition, I have my human solution consultant extraordinaire, Mike Corday, here on my left, who helps keep us on the level for the common everyday person. We have our national weekly technology show where we make sure you go mmm with technology news. How's your whiskey tasting, Mike? Mmm. This is the Jack Daniels Single Barrel Barrel Proof 134.4 is the total proof of that. Yes, 69.95 bottle. I think we should now move into Mark's Mumbles. Yes, let's hear what Mark mumbled about. And now for Mark's Mumbles! 
All right, Jack Daniels pulls barrels from the upper levels of its rickhouse, usually a tall rectangular structure designed solely for storing aging distilled spirits for their single barrel bottlings. With the barrel proof versions being released in various ranges from 125 to 140, many people hold Jack Daniels in high esteem, coming in as a top selling American whiskey in the world. It seems as if the brand has been mass produced with mixing other flavors with the whiskey. You can ask people like Mike if they like a good old Jack, and he may say Jack is Jack and tell storage from his college years. Mm. That's what he said. Nice. Mark has generally ignored it until the buzz surrounding this particular product caught his attention. When Mark initially opened the bottle, he had a neutral feeling about it. It was a very pretty bottle, but the juice was just a little bit better than the number seven and nothing that wowed him. The bottle went to the back of his shelf for many, many months. Finally, when the other whiskeys started running low, he had another taste, and wow, bottle was drained in a very short time, and he is now another has another one on order to replace it. Mark gives it a thumbs up. That yeah. is Mark's mumbles regarding All right. the whiskey. All right. Now that we got our whiskey out of the way, we'll see if it's a little bit better than our um, whiskey from last week, which it is, because you're not coughing. There, there is absolutely nothing about next week that's going to end up... <laughs> conflicting with this one. with this one at all okay no. i got you we're gonna move right now into our next segment this is your nugget of the week what are we gonna talk about okay Nathan? okay this week is crazy made up holiday shopping week uh-huh. this is when a company decides to sell items in the middle of summer and everyone is watching it on the internet and people are getting on up in the middle of the night so that on eastern standard time when the clock rolled over for Prime Day, people were there to get the best Prime Day special. Now, let's talk about Prime Day. Since the first Prime Day in 2015, the retailer has scaled the summer sales record to breaking heights. And for the first time in two years, Prime Day 2022 is back and happening in July, specifically today, July 12th, and Wednesday, July 13th. So how the heck do you call it a Prime Day when it's two days? Isn't that Prime Day's? Sure. What what the heck? Why why would you have Why you, do we care anymore? Well, nobody because cares this is about consi- grammar. This is considered a technology holiday. When you ask people, somehow they have Amazon Prime Day as a technology event. This Amazon doesn't even sell technology anymore. I, I don't know why crap. you're focusing on this. Okay, here you, we go. You butcher the English language like a like a, <laughs> like that poor cow that got hit by Skylab. <laughs> yeah. Okay, here we go. Now The retailer hosted Prime Day in 2021 in June. The earliest event was essentially a celebration of 20 years. So they just decided to have a Prime Day, which Mm -hmm. kind of makes sense. Amazon said, you know what? We're celebrating 20 years. Now, it has continued to go on, and even to this moment now, we have countries that have doubled their e-commerce statistics. The Prime Day in 2015, which was celebrated as the 20th anniversary, was first of its kind, and it lasted 24 hours allowing access to Prime members in nine countries, which was Amazon's most successful Black Friday ever. Now, in 2021, Prime Day grossed merchandise sales totaling more than $11 billion. Okay. I hate this holiday. What? I, why? I hate this holiday. What the heck is the world coming to, man? What? People what? on Twitch.tv are streaming, putting Amazon purchases in a cart. People are watching people... Find something on Amazon and put it in a cart. Okay. What what what, 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 what what have we come to? Why is the internet being used to watch people buy stuff why, from a conglomerate? Why is TV being used to sh- look at reality TV, quote unquote? I, I, it's pri- we, pri- Prime Day is horrible. I, I, I hate it. I hate it. I okay. hate it. I hate it. I think you've made that clear. Did I, Which is funny because you were talking about... Uh, Limiting bandwidth. So I, I did. So uh, so we're talking about, I, as a CTO of a company, mm-hmm. should I limit the bandwidth of getting to Amazon.com? That's a, a question that the ownership asked me because we don't want employees at the company that we work with going on out and spending their time on Amazon purchasing items. Yeah, but this is this is like a thing, right? This is a behavior that people have. Is it? And so you're trying to keep them from having that behavior, right? I am. What happens when it's not Prime Day and it's something else? You know, we should talk about that. You know what? Right now, let's move right into our mesmerizing moment. 
This is Mike's Mesmerizing Moment, presented by Story Coffee. Visit storycoffee.com. You know, every year, every year this happens. Every year this, this type of stuff happens, whether it's Prime Day or what's, what's your favorite one that you the, don't I, want to. The NCAA the tournament. The NCAA tournament. Now, that's right? a great use of internet yeah, bandwidth to watch all those games. That's a great use of company time. <laughs> well, see? I, I, well, I maybe have a, 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 a little double standard there. there. There's a little bit of a double standard here because, and, th- and that's what I'm, you know, that's what we're talking about is. As a as a CTO for a company, do you you target this particular day because there's going to be a loss of production? Why, when you're not going to do it for these other days? All right, so I so I didn't so I, I haven't limited it, the internet. I I, I kind of told some people that I was I was going to just to help yeah. them deteriorate the ability for them to think that they can go out there and get there. Now you, now you just ruined it for everybody. Now you're going to get some hate mail. I'm going to get some hate mail by saying I said I was going to do it and I didn't do it or that so, I, I mean but this is this is the this is the interesting part about, you know, human behavior. These are natural things that we do. It doesn't matter why we do them. I mean, this is this is just a sort of a phenomenon that we 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 have generated as part of our regular daily lives. So people look forward to this, you know, and, and we, you were talking about how it used to be a really cool idea, but now it's not even a cool idea because you don't even really get that many cool deals. You don't get, it used to be a technology where you actually got some great deals and now you have cold days. Is that you really, got is that really Walmart days? Is Everybody's that really jumping your beef, into this though. Is that, that's yeah, kind of is more kind of your beef yeah, is that you're of, not getting those cool deals. You're getting, you're getting discounts on stuff. You apples. can walk down the Walmart. Yeah. Get. Diapers, a discount on a blanket. I mean, I, I get the whole idea that um, Amazon sells more than technology, but it's I, I, I just yeah I, I struggle with yeah. the whole idea of this so, fake home. This is this is the this is the epitome of that of that. But yeah, that. my wife got up early and bought a whole bunch of Kindles. She there bought you a go, whole bunch see? of technology stuff so she can have gifts to give out for Christmas. And then I'm kind of like, eh. I'm not well, yeah, watching but, any I mean, of the it, deals. In the, but... mum, in the mum household, I would think this would be a very uh, look forward to day because the amount of electronics you guys have is just astounding. <laughs> you think we have some? Yes. Uh, uh, it, like the pictures you sent me of some Saturday. <laughs> some, from, uh, yeah, 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 you're you're like, got... holy crap. There's yeah. like 85 Consoles, consoles and, there, and controllers and stuff. Yeah, we probably do have a lot of electronics. You're right. Uh, I, you know, you know what, maybe a, I just don't like the good deals. They're they're I, not great deals anymore on electronics. Maybe that yeah, maybe you're I'm just pers- more... you're, you've per, you've 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 created these personal feelings around this this holiday, and then you're deciding what other people should believe. Okay, and that's you're just all you're doing is externalizing your your belief system onto somebody else. And we do this all the time when we we think about loss of production. Oh, we can't lose production. People really only when they go to work eight hours a day, yeah. they really only produce about six of those hours. Really? Yeah. And it's even even smaller, smaller and smaller. Really? You should have been there at my my Monday day at work. It was crazy. I bet <laughs> I, t- I didn't have any time today off. All right, we're gonna now move into our pick of the day. And now our pick of the day for our whiskey tastings. Let's see what bubbles to the top. It's always good to hear the music. All right, it is. So it is our pick of the day for our Jack Daniels single barrel proof 134.4, 6995 for the bottle. It's the special. You got to look for the special label here, right? So it's important. It's the Jack Daniels, not just the standard Jack Daniels, but it's the single barrel proof Tennessee whiskey, uh, Lynchburg, Tennessee. Yeah, you can probably look at the bottle and figure that out. Yeah. Is this a unique bottle? A very unique bottle. What do you give it? Thumbs up. You give it a thumbs up? Official thumbs up? Yep, that's an official thumbs up. Official thumbs up. Okay. And it's not even because I compared it with last week's whiskey, which was horrible. Okay. This actually is is a really good whiskey. Was last week's whiskey worse than uh, Canadian's best? Yeah. yeah, in in effect, not in taste. Okay, it's still, all right. It was it, it still tasted okay. So it, it has that's, a chance to win our trick. worst whiskey of the year award. Yeah, on the sheer physiological destruction it did. Yes. All right, Odia, to you. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Nathan is going to give us thumbs up. 
thumbs up. A that's, thumbs up. That's, that's, that's what a happens when I've been tweaking I'm a little from bit the Brady too, little earlier of the show. So, so we gave it a three thumbs up. Speaking of made-up holidays, you know what's coming on up? The Lace Awards. Uh, uh, I so thought we so, got rid of that. No. <laughs> so we got to have our makeup awards oh. soon. All right. Well, first of all, we enjoy you being a part of our show. Remember, the science of tomorrow starts with the technology of today. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us on Tech Time Radio. We hope that you had a chance to have that hmm moment today in technology. The fun doesn't stop there. We recommend that you go to techtimeradio.com and join our fan list for the most important aspect of staying connected and winning some really great monthly prizes. We also have a few other ways to stay connected, including subscribing to our podcast on any podcast service from Apple to Google and everything in between. We're also on YouTube. So check us out on youtube.com slash tech time radio, all one word. We hope you enjoyed the show as much as we did making it for you. From all of us at Tech Time Radio, remember, mum's the word. Have a safe and fantastic week.